read all of that because you can read that at home. If you're here, I need to share the knowledge I have with you and lay out some stuff for you. That's why I put paper. I've learned that if you write it yourself, you retain it better than I already have it pre-written for you and you fill it in the blanks. You're not going to retain anything. But if you write it for yourself and you ask questions and you put answer to it, 9 out of 10, you may remember it yourself. Also, you could go back to your own writing and look at some of the things you asked about the topic. Sounds good? Okay. So we're going to ask that shouldn't be asked. If you really have a question, <coughs> that means you know, put your hand up. But yes, it's not school, but now that I know you have a question, yes, ma'am. If you're telling them nothing about soccer, you have right a place. book that basically has the game plan. You are in the right place. Okay. If you know nothing about soccer, there's a whole I, lot I of stuff. I believe in proper teaching, so you I have. Normally, this class is an eight hour long class with an online version of it. Okay. What I'm going to give you today is just the meat and potatoes, but you got homework. Yeah. Because right. I cannot give it everything to you today. But part of the homework is always every day getting better and better. Yeah. While you do games, we call it OJT. While you're on the job and you see and you're infused in it, then that's when you, you really get the, the meat and potatoes. And I urge you, if you haven't watched soccer, watch it. Don't watch the players. Watch what the referee is doing, where he's running, why he's doing this, when he blows the whistle, when, because you can watch the game, but your focus needs to be on the referee. Okay. So it's going to help. Is it where do we find a soccer game? Yes, the question that's going to do for right now is going to YouTube. YouTube, okay. So that'll it's going work. to YouTube. That'll work. Yeah, if you don't have all the sports channel and all yeah, that, we don't you don't have, have to get that. Yeah. Just go yeah. to YouTube. And just look at, um, you can go EPL highlights. Come on. E EPL e highlights. L highlights. La Liga highlights. Uh, okay, come like that. L A L I G A. L A L A L I G A. La Liga. L A L I. Or soccer. <laughs> I'm here to valid, uh, facilitate soccer for you. And really, it's a discussion of what you know, what you don't know, and how to proceed going forward. I am the assigner slash senior official slash overseer of everything to do with soccer for Ireland Big Ball Soccer. So any and all questions to do with soccer, if you are going to be partnered with us going forward, will be mostly coming from me. We good? Before you leave today, you'll have my number too. We just do it little ones. We'll cover that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I normally like to start with a question: Who have actually played soccer? Good. It's been years, it's been like 30, 35 years. Once, it's, like riding a, it's like riding a bike. Once you did it, it's going to be there. Okay, who's actually gone to a soccer game? Who has officiated soccer? What age group? Um, eight. Eight? Who is a certified referee? I like to do that so I get an idea of the audience I'm talking. Who has no clue what soccer is? There we go. <laughs> there we go. So, as I was stating before, I got some paper for you too. If you need a pen, let me know. And I prefer to have you writing what you need because I figure when you write it, you remember it better. If you got any questions, I know it's not school. Put your hand up so I know to drop off and I can address your questions. This is normally online slash eight hours in a classroom class. I'm gonna to try to do it in four hours with homework for you because I'm gonna send you to a link to where you can finish tweak your curiosity on the SSF, which is United States Soccer Federation, which is also under the North Texas Soccer Federation as well. And you have another pen? No, no, no. This one this one's broke. Yeah, it's broke. Yeah. Soccer. Then the U.S. takes a piece of that and tweaks it to the way U.S. United States of America plays soccer, governed by. Then each state, which North Texas runs the soccer here in all of Texas, takes a piece of that and fit it to however they deem necessary for Texas to play soccer. Then based on that, each league takes what they need from that. And make it's kind of like USA Volleyball versus Paso. Yes. Okay. So 
Each league within Texas can tweak the rules based on the company bar. Okay. Reason why I'm telling you that, so as a referee, you're supposed to know. You know where your marching orders come from, and if it does not align with those things, you have to have, I have to have it either already written out in the rules before you start, or it's not playable. Make sense? So as a referee, say that one more time, say that one more time. If it's not in those rules laid out, i.e., if you're gonna ref for the Y, and if the Y rules does not cover everything that's alive with that, then it's not playable. It's a safety issue, it's a violation. If it's not covered under those rules. There are 17 laws to the game. Each country slash state frags that law based on what they're trying to do. There are 17 laws to the game. So just like the Y is going to have a list of rules and the way the rules are going to go, Rule one, no change. Rule two, no change. Rule three, no change. Rule four, no change. Rule five, we could have nine players on the field instead of 11. That's how the fragmentation goes. So I'll tell you where to find the 17 laws of the game, which is on our site, iRefBigBallsLuck.com. You can find them on there. What's the site again? iRefBigBallsLuck.com. iRef? Yes, sir. iRef. And follow the rules for that assignment. Because when you get the assignment, if it's going to have the listing, it's played under Academy rules. Again, you'll have on your assignment, Academy Rules is posted on the website. So you have to read for that rules for that particular league, but it's not a one size fit all. You may also get two different assignments in the same day. In the morning, you may do it YMCA, and in the evening, you may be doing Academy. You have to remember the transition between which league, because one league, it's no sliding and no heading, and the other league, you can play everything. So that's why it's important you know where you are and you know the rules. You are the referee. But we're going to come back to all the duties and responsibility of the referee later. But I'm just giving you a little tidbit of why it's important to know where the rules start, who's saying it, who's organizing it, and where you fall into that scheme of things. These lines are called touch lines. They're called touch lines. Next, we're gonna go connecting the lines so we're making a nice rectangle. These are called goal lines. Everybody got a nice rectangle? All right, so put a little note next to your rectangle. If the field is not a rectangle field, it is not to standard for FIFA, USSF, not rectangular in shape. It is not a FIFA slash USSF slash North Texas approved field to play on. The soccer field has to be rectangular in shape. Does it have to be this specific rectangle? No, but it has to be a long side and a short side. If it's not rectangular in shape, it is not playable for soccer unless somebody is already putting their bylaws. We're going to play on a circle. We're going to play on a square. Okay? If it's not in that rules, it's not happening. Cannot call it soccer. Gotcha. Age group all the way to professionals has to be rectangular in shape. Now, the size could vary based on the stadium, based on the field that you play on. I.e., six and seven and eight. Four and five years old, I got some small fields on there right now. Again, each is rectangular yeah. in shape. We good? All right. There will be a half line. Both sides will be the same. So right down in the middle of it will be a half line. That is very important in your management of the game. Then there will be a circle. It will be 10 yards in diameter. And in the center of that circle would be a center mark spot, the center spot. You good so far? Okay. So, from here to here should be five, here to here should be five, but the whole diameter should be 10 in diameter. 
We have five on one side, five on the other side, 10 yards. From your 18 yard box or penalty area. Next will be your 18 yard box or penalty area. That's where most of your trouble happens. And we'll cover that too. You good? 18 yard area is where if an attacker is fouled by a defender, and I'll cover what our attacker and defender, but just a little quick note for you. If an attacker is fouled by a defender, it's a given free kick one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. If an attacker is fouled by a defender inside this 18-yard area, it's a one-on-one -on -one free kick with the keeper. And I'm going to cover who the keeper and all that stuff. Keeper's in the box, defender, no, defender's in the box. Any foul committed in the air by the defender on the attacker it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one kick. How many defenders can be in that box? If the team want to put everybody in there. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's kind of where the internet could be. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So How is that line defined? Is it chalked out? Yes, sir. Okay. And we'll walk outside. Too. All right. yeah. This yeah. box here is marked. It will be marked. And if it's not marked when you come to the field, you need to find out who the home team is, and who, or you need to find out who like we should go to our state competition, who the facility manager is, and they make the correction for that. So normally the home team, as a minimum, they will have this, because <laughs> they want to get the penalties too. Yeah. You, you had 18 feet. What's the width of that? So this is going to go 18 here, from here to here, and this is going to come across 26. 26. Yep. But, but, with kids. Each field is different, so don't yeah. write that. Don't, don't even write, don't even write yeah. that part. But that has to be rectangle, it can't be a square. It has to be rectangle. So don't even write the width of it out, part out. And Just make sure it's from the foul by the defender on the attacker inside that area is normally a penalty, penalty kick, that's what they call it, and it's a one-on-one -on -one shot with the keeper. Yes. <laughs> now we're, we're going to get into fouls. What are Definitely. Okay. What is a foul? What is? Oh, we're going to cover all that. I'm just going to bring the field. On attack. Because they have brought the field down smaller to like the seven and eight. It's oh, not to full strength as uh, nine or ten yards. years old. Yes, ma'am. Yards was what? To the middle. Oh, to the middle of those two. Yes. Okay. So if you go to the field and it's not marked. Because it's going to happen, either like rain washed it out or whatever. These are some of the things that you're supposed to be doing before the game starts inspecting your field. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to inspect that. You just walk half the distance, that's where your spot's going to be. It's going to be halfway in between your 18 and your 6, or whatever modification it did to the field. That's the easiest way to do that. You good? Okay. So. Then there are corner arches. The corner arches that needs to be on the field. The ball cannot be kicked from a corner, has to be inside that arch line or on the arch line. It cannot be kicked anywhere else than in that area, in that so-called triangle. Yes, ma'am. Is that if, the, if they get cornered in there? If they, okay. if they get, and I'll cover that piece. Okay. Just remember. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to cover some. Is? I'm just giving you the markers on here, and then I'll give you direction on it. Tactical area. This is where the team is going to be, and the coaches can only be in. Coaches will not be outside of that area. They can't run down on the end of here, run back down on the other side, no. They have to stay in that tactical area, just like football, and basketball, basketball, and volleyball. And volleyball. <laughs> That's for the team and coaches. Team and coaches, they will have an area. Bear in mind, note to yourself, team and parents will not be on the same side. 
at no time, at no time, at no time. Are you talking about like on this side or this side or on this the side? The team side? and parents will never be on the same side as the field. They'll be on your other side. Parents okay, will be on their side. Okay. Or, okay. or some fields we go to will have a stand uh -huh. where the yes. parents are back here, but the team will be on the field. Okay. But at no time would the parents and team players be on the same side of the field. If you have that before the start of the game, you address it with the coaches and they will fix that. Note to self. Good? Yeah. 10 inches out of your head. Everything on this field is yards. 10 yards. Okay? So this is 10 yards. With a center spot. That's where the kickoff is going to be. We have the 18 yard box. We have the six yard box where the goal kick normally kicks off. In the middle. And we have what's in the middle here? It's going to be 12 kick in the middle. What's 12? Okay, let's go with 12. But what is it? What is <laughs> penalty spot? Penalty spot. Yeah. There we go. Okay. You got so far? Yeah. You, you draw your, your record? I, I knew all this already. Oh, okay. all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what we have over here? Area. Who's allowed over here? Coaches and players. 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 Okay, put another note to yourself in there. Some teams have like three different coaches. Really? You as a referee only need to identify the head coach. Only person you're going to be talking to is the head coach. If it doesn't come from the head coach, it doesn't matter to you. You're not on the field to answer three, four, Can five, six people. The you could, okay. but you don't, want to do that. you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Because you want to carry a, a demeanor of your new business, right? Professional. Professional. Yeah. So, and the parents and whoever is out there. So that's why minimum have, five yards. Have chairs. Take that's why minimum, minimum, minimum five yards. Yeah. And now we have room to throw the ball in. And also have room for AR to run up and down for the call. Gotcha. So that's why you have the five yards. We good? Gotcha. Okay. Now, another piece for your notes. According to FIFA, USSF, North Texas, and the laws of the game with YMCA, there shall be no parent or spectator in the back here. None. Don't care if they're coaching, helping, parents, whatever have you, there will be none. If you see it, immediately, not immediately, at your first convenience, the ball is stopped, you go over and ask that parent to move. No parents on the goal line. Behind the behind, ball, yeah. yes. Okay. You're gonna see it. The parents gonna wanna go coach the kid, and the kid turn around talking to mom or dad. Get popped in the head of the ball because they weren't paying attention, and that's a whole different ball of life. What about the uh, the seating arrangement? Can they sit further out, or, or they can't be there at all? Nothing. So, good question. If, for example, parent is sitting way out here, and the parent is cool, that's that's fine. The minute they start coaching. Go. Okay. okay. They can sit way out here once there's no distractions in play. Okay. And that's almost 30 yards out. And 30 yards? About 30 yards out. They can sit out there. Okay. The minute they start coaching, they have to move. As per level of officiating, there's also a size tree. That's the little kitties that run around and they'll bunch up and fall down with the snotty nose and everything else. But for your level of fish eating, it's going to have to be size 4 or size 5. Okay? Couple things to know with the ball of play. This is borderline not good because it has pretty much tears around it. Reason why it's considered borderline not good, if somebody were to go to the head of the ball or... Okay. Yes. Yeah. Or get hit with the ball in the face or the ball passes by, they could actually get cut off of it. So this is the scene better days. This should be retired. What, what is it? Wiring or something? Yeah. No, it's treading. Oh, but the treading is yeah. yeah. split. You know, okay. it's back to okay. yep. And then, too, by the time somebody really take a good shot out of it, it probably pops. How out. do you know a four or five? It's five. written on it. It's written on it. It is? Yeah, it's written on it. It is. This one's so beaten up. Yeah, here we go. Five. Okay. Right. Yep. Four or five. Four or five. five. Yep. And this one. This one's a four. You cannot. You cannot use a bowling ball for soccer, which would be very painful, but you cannot. Beach ball, none of those people get really creative out here. Has to be a soccer ball. 
any color, any set, anything. There's so many different color variations. The only portion I have for you in color, if the team is wearing red and they're playing a red ball, it's going to be hard for you to know where the ball hit because it's camouflaged by the same color. So you try to get an offset color from what jerseys the team are playing in. Other than that, once it's properly inflated, both teams agree on it, you're good to go. And what you play? Based on what the ball is, it depends. Okay. And depends on the day it is, because just like last weekend it was so cold, we had to take some air out. Because a kid gets oh hit with that ball fully, it, it's going to hurt that. <laughs> it's going to hurt that. It was too cold. So the other piece of this is, the home team provides the game ball. You as a referee do not. The home team provides the game ball. If the home team cannot or do not have a game ball, the away team can provide the ball. I per personally ask for three of them. I have one in the center, one on each end of the goal, opposite side, so if the ball goes out, we're not waiting for somebody to go retrieve it. We just bring a ball in and we, we, we keep going because I've already inspected it. You as a referee, have to inspect the ball. So, I inspected, my ARs inspected, and then the two captains inspected. So there's no misunderstanding once we start the game. Very rough, this ball is good. You inspected it. You guys said it was good. We played. So you knock all of that out. Now, this is for players. Each player will have a number on their jersey. Each team will have uniform colors. Not one person got blue, one person got red. It will all be uniform. Every player on the field will be numbered. I'm using this as an example, but plus or minus. But you may have because we are going into what? One, two, three. Some leagues start on the 23rd, next on the 23rd. So it's just the first day of the league. You may see some teams with just uh, taped on numbers. We work with them based on the direction from their league and the following week there should be no taped on numbers because they got their kits in. But I will give you guidance on that in if you're working for me on the guidance or hey if you get to the field and they got tape on jersey they already got approved to be that way. Okay so you're not wondering okay what's the next step. But they're supposed to have the number on jersey. Nobody should have the same number and the goalie has to be in a different color. Everybody will wear shin guards. Every player on the field will have shin guards. Take a look. You talking about don't have one here? Yep. Okay. I don't know if that's. So this would be not good. That's not good. Those are football shoes. You gotta see them. First game of the season, we'll work with them. After that, no. Because this is gonna hurt someone. Tearing up? Yeah. Okay? Oh, yeah. Accidentally stepped, kick, it's okay. gonna hurt someone. So that is a no. And that is something you gotta pay very pretty much attention to. Safety of the players, safety of the coaches, safety of the the team, safety of the, the spectators, but your number one job is safety on the field, okay? So you have the power as a referee to make corrections to safety. You just inherit it. So when you get there, if something is not safe, something was done which is under foul or misconduct or dissent, you have the power to administer this. Okay, and I'm gonna cover some of these things for you, sir. What time should you get there before the game? Good question. If it's your first game, and you're the first game in the morning, I would recommend to you 30 minutes before your game time because there are some things you need to take care of before the game starts. And I'm gonna cover that now. So, first game in the morning, or your first set of games, you don't know where you're going, I would strongly recommend Get in there 30 minutes, so you know what the traffic feel like, you know how to get there, you get there on time because you have inspections to do, you have pre-game brief to do, and you also have coaches meeting to do, and you have your uh, captains to do the point toss and all that stuff. You good? All right, so you are in charge of issuing out 
punishment on the field for any fouls, misconduct, or serious foul on the field, i.e. technical fouls, which is no, no uh, card, yellow fouls, and serious misconduct, which is red card foul. Okay, that's your, that's your job. Can you card a player before the game even start? Yes, you can. If you come up and Johnny or Susie is dropping the F-bomb or the F-bomb and you hear him, you can card that player and that player cannot come up to the field. You can. That's your official. Wow. Yellow card, they can't, or red card? Either one. Either one. If they give him a yellow, they cannot start the game. If you red card him, they cannot come on the field. You got cards in here? I'm about to show you all that stuff. Oh, yeah. You got well, cards. Well, all we have. If you go to the website, they send it straight out. And it's right now, they run a guy, they run it for like $37, you can get a whole kit. Oh, Shirt, yeah. pants, socks, and a car. Okay. Can't beat that deal right now. Oh, yeah. So, this is what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. If you go to official.com, <laughs> you can actually get the whole kit. Official.com. Amazon has too. Amazon has it, but if you look at Amazon, it probably swings right back out to the same place. Yeah. <laughs> official sport, what official sports are called? Official sports. Official sports are called. Oh, that's where volleyball is. Yep. Official, official sports are called. Yeah. I have all the colors. Come yellow, <laughs> green, red, blue, black, and pink for breast uh, breast cancer awareness. Uh huh. But I'll call it. We're allowed to use any color. So. So if, you, only one shirt? if you're starting off, mm -hmm. I recommend you get the yellow. Yeah. If this is something you like, then incrementally get the rest. Okay. Go from yellow to blue to green to red, then black. If you're gonna try it out, just get the yellow for now. If after a few go around, you get paid, you know that this is something you're gonna do like next year or in the fall, then start getting different color. The yeah. different colors would be blue, then green, then red, Black. We good? But they have the long sleeve and the short sleeve. I normally wear long sleeves so I don't get, I don't get sunburned as well. I wear long sleeve all year round. We good? But I also have the short sleeve one. They also have the pants, the black pants that comes with it. And the socks, the referee socks. Are you will see. Same is it the same color as the. No, the black, it will be a black pants and the socks will be black with. Two white strips. And you'll see the whole kit. The whole okay. kit will be right there for you. Okay. And also, they have the kit that gives you two flags as well. $37 again? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's a double barrel right That's there. That's a magnet. Yeah. Where do I see it written on the top, box P? Where do I find, see that on there? No, when they, when they send it to you. Oh, well, no. there, yeah. So I won't know that if I drive so, a volleyball game and know that's the right one, right? No. So if you, when you Ooh. look on this. Mm. Well, a lot of places, you, same place you ordered it, you could order this too, or you could get it at Walmart. Oh, okay. Fox P40 Sonic. Okay, we have a... Anything, a anything sport. less yeah. than that, I'm telling you, once you're blowing indoor, mm. once you're out of that field, yeah. you're going to have to work too hard. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So they have those at Walmart? Yes, you can get this okay. at Walmart, or you can order it on Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Can you a pencil for this? This is your recording score. You should have a yellow card for intermittent fouls or not serious conduct, a red card. Serious conduct or if you have to send somebody off the field. So we're good on what we're supposed to have as an official. Yep. And of course, lots of snacks, water for hydration. Lots of snacks, water for hydration. Lots of snacks, water for hydration. It's not where the, the where league that you have is going to feed you. Sometimes they have... Um, Restaurants out there, which actually, of course, you're fishing, you get free food. Sometimes they don't. Yeah. Walk with your hydration, walk with your own food. <laughs> Whistle, you're going to need your cards and your book. You need something to write with to record the score. You need flags. You good? You good? Okay. I have a question. Not yet, sir. Not yet. You're on this. No. Is this still the, the correct jersey? You're finally in the correct jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're finally in the correct jersey, sir. He's wonderful. Okay. Good. So, we have covered what you're supposed to have, and now we're going to move into 
One more piece of this. The whistle. Oh, most important thing. You need a watch. Not your phone. You need a watch. Not your phone. You need a watch. Preferably something that you can stop, start back, track the time. Okay? Because you're going to do that. You are in control of the time for the game. You, official, are in charge of the time for the game. If it's a 25 minute half, you run the clock. Okay? You control it. Most of the games are going to be. No, sir. No. <laughs> you cannot wear the watch around your neck. You will not have your phone out tracking the time. Not going to work. The perception is you're on the phone tweeting. So, watch. I normally carry two in case one goes down. That is me. You need a watch. Okay? I'll get my steps in too. So that's my you're going you're gonna to get some steps in. We good? All right. So, you get to the field. First thing you do is inspect the field. First thing you do. So when you get to the field, nine out of 10, put a little side note to this, either you're gonna be doing a duel or a three-man crew. What is a three-man crew versus a duel? Hold that thought, I'm gonna cover it. But, let's say you, there's a parking lot and you get to the field, you already met you know, the referee. If you're the center referee, great. Everything that I'm going to tell you going forward from here is as if you are the center referee. Center referee being the person, head person in charge. Put a note to yourself, AR1, mean assistant referee, senior in charge. AR2, that's the backup to the AR1. Make note of that. AR1, start over again. center referee. Center referee. That's the head referee in charge. AR1. Assistant referee. That's a senior assistant person. Just by that occasion. They may not be, but just by the occasion. Appointed by the center referee. AR2 is a backup to the AR1. So, if you are the center referee, and you have two other referees that's there, you will decide who is the assistant AR1 and who is the AR2. AR1 referee always takes the side of the team. AR1. AR1, the assistant, always has the side of the team. AR2 gets the spectators. Okay. AR1. Side, side of the team. Okay. Side of the team, yes. AR1 goes to the team. AR2. Side of the parents. Or spectators, or whatever happened on the other side. That's so right here is what you're going to do, your team brief. Your team brief is meeting your other referees. So you can decide, <laughs> so you can decide who is AR1, who is AR2, and then you talk about how you're going to referee or manage the game. I told you we're going to be jumping into a lot of things quickly, but I'm trying to give you as much information as possible. You good so far? Yeah. Okay. So, you meet with your team, and your brief should go like this. As a center referee, hey, my name is such and such. Uh, today you're gonna be the AR1, today you're gonna be the AR2. We're gonna do this game. I'm tracking that the game is 25 minutes half, or 40 minutes half, or 30 minutes half. You have all the information, and you're putting it out to your team. The way I like to call the game, give me a few minutes, let me see how the game is being played. I'll take everything in the box and I'll cover what the box is and just give me a spill of how it's supposed to be. Any fouls that happen in the box, I'll be the bad guy. I'll make the call in there. If you see it, I'll just probably look at you and acknowledge that the foul happened. Other than that, let me make the call. You are in charge of... That's the middle. That's, the that's me in the middle, okay. briefing my ARs. Okay. You are in charge of offsides and the uh, throw-ins. Okay. So I'm telling you as the AR, if you're my AR, and you're my AR, you are in charge of your AR1, your AR2. The only job you have is offsides and watch the throw-ins. That's it. I'm gonna take charge of the whole field. I'm in charge of it. Anything falls in the box, I got it. I'm gonna tell you, if something happened behind me that I'm not seeing, go ahead and, and let me know. Other than that, 
That's the only thing you need to worry about. If you're not sure what the offside is, you get flagged down. I'll be the bad guy. That's pretty much a conversation. That's it. That's it. That's as simple as it should be. How are you feeling today? You good? Anything hindering you from playing today? Nope. You still tell me you good? Anything hindering you from playing today? You good? That's it. So now I know how my team is. Now let's go inspect the field. We good? Yep. You could frag that however you want to to get your point across. But you see, I introduced myself to the team. I let you know what you're in charge of. I let you know what you're in charge of. And I already tell you who is AR1, AR2. Reason being, know to yourself, if something were to happen to me on the field, mm -hmm. who is the next person in charge? Yeah. AR1. And if something happened to AR1 too, AR2. So there's no wondering who's going to take over the game. We good? So, as I brief that, something happens, immediately you have to wonder, AR1 will go ahead and take over. You may have to drop down to a two-man, and I'll cover that in a minute. But right now, I'm instructing you as a three-man team. We good? All right. So, we're going to go to the field and inspect it. AR1, you're going to go down and check the furthest one. AR2 will check here. In a sweeping motion this way, this way, I'll be running through the middle, and then we all meet up on the other side. So we cover the whole field. What you looking for when you're inspecting the field? Sharp objects, needles. You check in the nets, which we're gonna do when we go out there. You check in the nets to make sure that there's no holes in the net, and if the ball has gone into the net, it actually went through the right way and the goal is scored the proper way and it didn't go out of the outside and come in the inside. You're making sure all the markings are on the field. And you're also making sure that the goal, which is the most important thing, is anchored. So write that down. The if goal the is goal anchored. is anchored. If the goal is not anchored, do not play the game. Mm -hmm. Because if that goal is not anchored, and I'll show you when we go out there, and that goal falls on a player, I can't help you. I'm, I'm serious, I cannot help you. Yes, that will stop the show. Big hold, more than a, more than a foot size, we can actually twist it. Yes, that will stop the show. Uh, water, down here is water log, where your foot is actually under water. The ball is flying up, sliding on top of it. That will stop the show. That's a safety issue. Cannot play on that. The goal area is underwater. Can't even see the keeper standing down there. <laughs> can't play on there. Coach, oh, he'll be all right. No, sir, we can't, we can't play on that. They don't supply boots, right? <laughs> so nine out of 10. Did we still get paid for showing up? Anyway, the field is not proper. I'm gonna cover that. All right, I'm gonna cover that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Let me get the facts down first, and I'll give you the benefits after. Okay. <laughs> so, these are some of the things that will stop the show. By then, if the feel is that bad, you would already know about a cancellation or not. Or while I'm there, you make a determination, by then you'd be talking to me, hey, Ernest, look, this field is tore up from the floor. Yeah. What is your guidance on it? I'm about to, this is the magic word, abandon the game. That's the magic word. Abandon the game. That's the magic word. That's the word in your Rolodex. It's no longer forfeit. Abandon the game. The reason why the game is abandoned is because either you use that terminology, team doesn't have enough players, the field is in no condition to play, a safety issue, there was a fight and they couldn't get it resolved, our parents <laughs> heckling or spectator heckling, coach won't leave the field. All these are causes for abandonment of the game. As I said before, I'm going to be jumping all over the place. And you notice we haven't even started the game yet. Yeah. So all these things are gonna happen really fast that we need to be aware of, okay? So on, that, on that water issue, okay, a lot of the fields we uh, referee on, they're, they're kind of banked so that the water drains off the field. Um, how do you feel about, you know, if there's like large bodies of water, you know, several inches deep, that are just off the plain surface. You know, and I'm not talking about 10 feet off this, I'm talking about that far off the plain surface. If what he's describing is any part of on your playing field, mm -hmm. then that is your question of can the player safely play on the plain surface of the field. Now, if it's off somewhere here, 
which we have had before, has nothing to do with your plain surface. Because this now great rectangle we have is now called irresponsibility. <laughs> once you get in there, okay? Once you get in there. And this lightning strike before we start. Everybody wait it out. We got to 29 minutes and another lightning strike. By then, if it's your first game or your second game, they probably already looked into reskin. Okay, because we already pushed the time. Okay, and your course of action for that is then a discussion has to happen with the coaches for time. If it's the only game, then cool, but if it's other games back to back, then you may have to just play a half of the game, but break it up into two halves, okay? Because some of the games are 30 minutes, some are 35, some are 25, some are 40. So it's a discussion at that time. So they could be already in the middle of the second half and decide to cancel the game. So then do they go Sorry ahead? to cancel. Oh. Explain the game. Okay. You got okay. to explain what they're canceling. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then at that point, they either forfeit or abandon the game. Okay. Is there a so, win or a loss? Wait, so you got to not, you, remember now, you're the official. Mm -hmm. So you have to give me a lot more information than that for me to give you an answer. Because of why me. Okay. Who is abandoning the game? I am. You, you're who? I'm the one, I'm the middle. <laughs> okay, so you're the middle. I'm and, the one. And you, you're abandoning the game? Yes. Okay, why okay. are you abandoning the game? Because of lightning. How much time was left in the game? It was, uh, I have about 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes left in the game? Yeah. And you're abandoning the game? Yeah. Okay. You go that, by the score? That, that's allowed, yes, you go okay. by the score. Okay, Yes. You have to notify the coaches if that's what okay. you want. Yes, but that's okay. fine. Because once you completed one half of oh, the game, okay, that's where... then the game can be abandoned okay. without a without a reschedule. Okay, you gotcha. completed one half of the game. So you already 50 minutes into the second half, and that happened, and the score well, is a 20 minute game. 20 minute game. Okay. <laughs> Nonetheless, you started the second half. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so the score is two one 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 eleven to you. nothing. I got gotcha. you. Okay. You go with the present score. Okay. okay. And you're, like I said, you're into the second half. Uh, there is no winner or loser. You just abandon the no, game. Sir. There is no Each winner. league is different. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. That's for sure. I will tell you for Academy, if you complete one half of the game and you go into the second game and the game is started and you abandon the game at that time, the score stands. Okay, there will be no the rescheduling. Time. The score stands. Okay. Okay? Unless they're going to playoffs where they have to determine who can win. And at that point, they're probably going to schedule another day to gotcha. play. Yes. <coughs> now, YMCA goes by the same rule. If they have, because their games are back to back to back. Gotcha. If you abandon the game because of whatever, then the score stands. Yeah, okay. Good? Okay, that's, that's good right there. That's good wording. That's good right there. What else? There's a little thing in there that you, as the center ref, it helps you out. I speak to you. There we go. There we go. Two, you get a feel of, of the attitudes of the coaches, so you know how strict you need to be or how lax you could be, based on how when you meet them, how how the the reception works. works. Yep, how the reception works. Okay, that's why you have the coaches meet so to know who you are, <coughs> to identify who the head coaches are. And you lay out what you expect from them. Mine's go something like this. Thanks for coming on, coaches. My name is Ernest. I'm going to be a center ref today. These are my ARs. Respect is given, respect is earned. I respect you as a coach. Thanks for being here. Respect me as a referee. I am going to referee the game to the best of my ability as per the laws of the game, FIFA, USSF, North Texas, and whatever league. We are going to agree to disagree but we're going to maintain professionalism at all times. At the end of the game or half half time, you want to question something with me? Great. My time allowed, I'll answer it for you. Do you have any questions on me? I already tell them what my expectations is. I tell them where I'm coming from. And if they say nothing at a time, you have nothing to say to my ARs. All questions comes through me. I love it. Nothing for my ARs. 
So I'm already telling them. Yeah. Because there's a three method process to be in the center right. Ask, tell, and dismiss. I ask them already because that's my coach's need. So during the game, I don't have to ask them no more. I already done ask them. So the next step would be telling them. And I'll show you how that works. So I'll brief them. So the next part of that, when I ask them, hey, you have any questions for me? They say, no. I said, in my ARs, have nothing to see my ARs. All traffic comes from me. Have your subs ready at the half. On your possession, I'll allow the sub. If it's not your possession, you're not gonna get a sub. Make sure everybody got shin guards and all jewelry are off. Send your captains for me. Home team, send three balls with your, your captain. That's it. You could tweak that how you want to for you. The dragon is the tail. That's my coin to do the coin toss with. It's distinctive, it's no misunderstanding. <laughs> and where do we get this? No, no. Yeah, no. I know, I know, that's what I'm saying. Nice. <laughs> so, I can tell you we could get one of these. Oh, yeah, you have 20 to go years. To, you have to go to Asia, okay. you have to go to the semi league. Go <laughs> I knew you were going to be so smart, but you like that. Okay. Okay, and I'm speaking to both captains. I'll tell them shake hands. Shake hands, gentlemen. So they're introducing themselves. When they come up here, I have my book. And the only thing I'm writing in my book. Confirm the name of the home team. I confirm the name of the away team. So we have team A, team B, team A being the home team. And then I'm putting right next to team A the number of the player that's the captain. I don't need to know his name. I just need to know the number he has. So any shenanigans go on the field. That's the only person I'm talking to. Likewise, I'm doing with the home the away team. Because you cannot talk to 22 plus players on the field. Traffic comes through these two guys on the field. Traffic comes through the coaches off the field. See where I'm going with it? So while on the field, these are the only two people should be communicating with you. Okay? Remember that kids go up, players up, ref this, ref that, how much time? If they ain't these two numbers, we got nothing to talk about. Okay? And that's the instructions I'm gonna give the captains. Okay? You yeah, I'm coming to the ARs. The players, you come to the ARs too, the coach come to the ARs, but we're not talking about them, right? No. Okay. That's why I put it out to them. So the right. same thing I'm going to put out here. Right. Captains, I have nothing to say in my ARs. All traffic comes through me. Right. I'll be the bad guy. Right. Okay? Because the ARs shouldn't have to deal with that. That's you, you're the <laughs> person in charge. Yeah. You're the person in charge. Yeah. Okay? So. So you good cop and bad cop. All day. <laughs> <laughs> so. You're gonna do the coin toss. Home team, you're the home. Away team, you're the away team. You're gonna get to call it in the air. Whatever you say, you're gonna repeat it. So there's no misunderstanding on what was called. This is fair, this is tail. Call it in the air, sir. And tails it is. Which side you wanna defend, sir? You're gonna stand so you get the ball coming in, sir. Shake hands and let's get the party started. <coughs> That's it. Remember, whoever wins the toss, gets to pick side. They don't get both. You good? So now that I know he got the way team get the kick coming in, I put a tick mark next to team B. So it reminds me the second half team A needs to get the ball coming in. Yep. Else you wanna forget. So right. every time the away team gets the ball, it's just depending on what side they want to not really. You end up winning the whole toss. Huh? Okay, so the person who won the toss get to pick side. Gets to pick side. Yeah. The person who lost toss gets, gets the ball. ball. Okay. You, before it had it to where you get both, <coughs> and you could defer it and all that. You know the first. If you win the toss, you get to which side you want to attack or defer. Is you that, end up winning it. So. Is that a change for this year? Yes. Yes. Good. We good. Steps for you? Uh -huh. That's for you. Yep. So every one of y'all should be doing the same thing to know what your 10 yards oh. look like walking. Yeah, because yeah. my 10 yards and your 10 yards are going to be different. Yeah. So you may take 11 for you to get there. Yeah. So that's 10 yards. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I was a golfer, so I've, I've got 10 up one yard pace.
when you get to a feel, you're gonna have to fine tweak it. I'm giving you what one's supposed to be like, so when you get to a feel, it may not be marked. Or hard and says, listen, you can already walk it in your mind, okay? Here's another piece of that. A foul may happen and the player may ask for 10 yards. If you don't know what it looked like in your head, you're gonna give me one of these. And I'll be like, what are you doing? Okay, so 10 yards is normal step, 10 yards. Okay, and I'm gonna cover some of that. We good? Yep. All right, so what are those two lines on the side? Those two lines, what are they? They are touch lines. Touch lines. Touch lines. Touch lines. That's important. So here's what happens with the touch line. When the ball, the ball goes over the touch line, the whole ball has to go over the touch line. So let's go this way. Show you what the whole ball looks like. The ball is above the line. Who said that the ball is out? Who said it's in? Good call. The ball is in. Yep. Yeah, it ain't all the way out over the so white line. Down, if you look down, down, you look down. There's no okay. space in between it. That ball is in. Yeah. Are you feeling it? Technically, the, ball the is physical in. ball is out. Yeah. It's not. If there's no we're not space, going by the bottom, we're if going there's by not the a space between the ball and that line, the ball is in. Okay. You're gonna have a lot of people. That's out. That's you're gonna have a lot of people yelling, but the ball was out. The whole yeah. ball has to cross the line. The whole That's the ball. trick right there. Didn't the say ball. part of the ball base. The bottom of the ball. The whole ball. Well, if you're at this angle, it looks out. Well, that's why we have line. That's why you have a line person. Uh, Woo! So, see where she's standing, looking yep. at it? Yeah. That's where everybody should have been. That's, that's, right. Right. that's, that's right. why we're not like basketball. Okay. That's what our one and our two is doing. That's it. She got it right. Guys this right here, you as the AR, you should be looking. If the ball is like that, your position is here, that's it. That's where they go. If the ball goes out, the only way to restart the ball coming in is with a throw in. Is where they throw it. I don't care where you throw it. That's yeah, none of your gotcha. concern as a referee. Yeah, gotcha. Here's what the throw is supposed to look like. Throw supposed to look like this. It's gonna go that way. Sir. Okay. From behind here, right. going forward. Oh. From behind here, going forward. Okay. Now, in that process, one foot comes up, the foul throw. Okay. Both feet have to remain on the ground. I can do like this. I can drag my foot on the throw. Both feet have to remain on the ground. I can even match the line. Still be okay. I cannot do that, however. It's a foul throw. But I can match the line. Still be an okay throw. Okay? If you're refing here, you're gonna see it. And what I normally instruct the kids to do is do like this. It's very hard for you to pick your feet up if you cross your feet. Okay? I try to help the kids out. But other than that, that's the only place I do it. The rest of the league, it's an automatic turnover. If it's a foul throw, the other team gets the ball. Good. Some of the ones they have already helped out. They have a blue line that runs out five yards. That tells you where the spectators need to be. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if a foul happened when the ball was going out and Johnny got overexcited and pushed Susie going for the ball, then you bring it back in play, closest part where the ball went out, and you give a kick in whichever direction. But other than that, the only kick coming in is a throw in. The other part of the half line. Is subs. If the team ready to substitute, the player should be here waiting to come in on their possession or if the other team is subbing and that person is coming in. No player should come in, come out of the field without your approval. Johnny can't decide to just walk off the field.
Mm -hmm. He can't just decide to go on the field if the coach put him in. Wrong answer. You are responsible for everybody and the count of everybody on the field. Are we recording your first time? That's what you see on the test. Okay. And at any time you see the numbers in right, you can physically count. Okay. So when a substitution is happening, I'll tell you the trick to the trade. If a team came with 14 players, there's only 11 on the field, that means how many on the bench? <laughs> how many? So at any time I have two players on the bench, I'm not got too many people on the field. Mm. They can have more people on the bench, but they can't have less. Yeah. Unless somebody went to the bathroom. Okay. Yeah, that's right. And at that time when I look, I start counting. Yeah. That, that's tricks of the trick. Sure. And that's where ARs help you manage. Yeah. They are here looking at whoever is on the team side, comes down and look over, hey, wait a minute, okay, they start counting. Refs, we got the time. You good? Yes. Alright, so let's start the game. So, ideally when we line up, away team, home team, okay? So, who have we determined that won the toss? Uh, the home team won. So the away team got the ball, right? right. right. So that's you, right? Right. All right. You guys come in the circle. Oh, I love it. So, all right. So, on the kickoff, you don't care how many people I got in here. That's okay. none of your concern. Oh, okay. That's the coaching, tactical, however they want to do it. You don't care. Okay. You're only making sure that the away team, that the away team, the opposing team that does have the kickoff is outside the center. Anywhere else in the field before that half, however they want to put their people, none of your concern. Remember, at this time you're officiating the game, you're not coaching the game. You don't care what you're doing. Safety and management and obeying of the 17 laws of the game. That's all you're concerned about. So, they got to kick off. The rule states that the ball has to make one full rotation any direction for the ball to be in play. You have to remember that. The ball has to make one full rotation in any direction for the ball to be in play. So it's going to look something like this. At this time, you as the official will step out of the circle, you signal which side is going to go. So, what I know to do, keeper, you ready? Keeper, give me the thumbs up. Keeper, you ready? Hit my watch, I look at both of my ARs. Now we ready to go? Ah, okay. And the game is started. Now, I have announced that the game is started. The game is not truly started till the ball does what? Rotate one rotate. rotate. Whichever direction. Okay? So, on the kickoff, Johnny comes up, hits it here, and runs and kicks it again. That is not allowed. Oh. The same player can only touch the ball once oh. on the kickoff. Okay. They cannot play the ball twice without another player touching it. You call back the ball and you do a restart. We good? Yep. That's going to happen. Let's walk. Nobody touches it. And the ball goes in the back of the net. Is it a goal? Nope. Oh, I don't know. Is it a goal? No, no. Not a goal? Why not? Why? Because he can't kick it. You can't kick it. You can't kick it. You can't kick it. Are you saying if he kicked it from inside that circle? Kicks it from that foot from there. Kicks it forward. Nobody touches it. Well, it's a goal. Yeah, it's a goal. Okay. Yeah, it's a goal. 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 Yeah, Johnny can't kick it twice. Anybody else can kick it after that. Okay. Not his fault. The keeper couldn't save it, nor the defender can kick it out. Whistle, and a goal has been scored. No stop to play. Okay. Because the signals are powerless. You good? Yeah. Okay. Signal. I look where the ball is. Once the team start moving up the ball, I don't right or rotate anything until I get back to the center. I just want to make sure. Is it right and or left hand? Whichever is going against you. So what happens is if this 
goal to score, but the kids don't hear nothing, so they just keep moving. At that time, if the goal is scored and you know your whistle, you stop him. You already pointed at the goal to score. So here's a kicker part of that. That's the coach's job to teach the kids what the goal look like and what it's not. That's your job. You know, position. That's the part you transition to. It's gonna happen. And if it's like that, they know it's scored. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's not a doubt that it didn't yeah. score. If it's like that, they're gonna know it's scored. Okay? We good? Yeah. Uh, okay. That's kind of interesting. The blow on the whistle. The uh, it's two man referee. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the ball looks like it probably made it. Get back everybody inside. Let me cover what I need to cover out here so I get it. No, you're good. You're good. I'm good. Oh, I'm good. back and lands out here it's not a, it's not because it didn't clear all the way in. It possibly could hit here, and come back hit inside, out. and yep. come back out. And it's good. Okay, it's you as an ear have to make that termination. Okay, so that's so go with we your have gut. to be watching yeah. all the time. You it. have to be on your yeah. game. It's just like with other sports where you have to be watching the ball to know where it lands. So everybody got I a flag? Any other sport. With the flags there. With the people with the flags. Right yeah, with the people with the flags. Okay, everybody come over on this side. We do know how to do some quick drills on flag. What you supposed to do? I'll give you the signal. Okay? So now we in the game. Everybody flag out. Unravel your flag. Everybody flag out. Flag out. You gotta get on the line, Joe. Okay, so the rules of AR, the flag will only be held in your left hand okay. at all times, at all times. When you are steady, when you are in place, the flag will be held in your left hand. If the flag is put in your right hand, the known code that the ref knows something is wrong with you and you need to come over and talk to you, something is going on, you're not feeling well or something like that. Okay. The flag will remain in your left hand. However, you can change, change hands, signal and bring it back down and put it in your left hand. Okay? The flag will also always stay to the viewing side of the field for the referee. So right now we're facing this way. You should be in somewhat of a stance, looking at the play, getting ready. Okay? So you should always be as the air with the second to last defender. That means the goalkeeper and then whoever that defender is in front of the keeper. That's your line. Always be a line. Or if the ball passes that second to last defender, then you follow the ball. <coughs> good? Yep. You good? Okay. So, right now, this is the easy part. So, we move into that direction. Let's go that way. We transition the flag from left to right because the flag is supposed to be facing which side? Inside. Inside. Always to the view of the field. So, the flag has to be, no, not fold up. Down, down, and you're moving with it. Yep. Always viewing. There we go. Yep. And we stop. When we stop, we call it size up. You size up and you're looking. Yes, sir. What you say the flag always has to be the center. When stop. If you're moving, flag like has to be your right to move because you're moving this direction. So then once you stop, it has to come back in your left hand. Because now you're standing, you're facing, you're facing the field. You could transition and make calls. But it has to, when in rest, it has to come back in your left hand. So, so when you're transitioning up this way, you put it in your left hand. So we about to go left, about to go left. But don't we have to go in this hand? Too much. I've done this too much. You've done it too much. Yeah. 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 Y
us for a couple years. Okay. Okay, but when we he's go up, left hand, right stop. here. Stop, so it should be in your left hand right now. Okay. So we're going this way. So all you gotta do is turn, you gotta do nothing to the flag. It's down here. And you're looking and you're moving. You're looking and you're moving. So the player stops. So you turn in your thighs up. Still left hand. You're going right. Looking, moving, looking, moving. That's why you gotta make sure the line in front of you is clear. And player stop, stop. Put it back in line. You wanna take some practice, I'm telling you. Because this is gonna kinda of awkward. See you about Don't stop. Here's some of the things you can do. Side step based on how much the player moves because not all the time they're going to move a whole lot. Or you can side step based on how much you're moving. You're allowed to do that. So let's try the right. Let's go this way and then we're going to go that way. So let's go a little bit. Still left hand. We're going to go back this way. Still left hand. All we're doing is side stepping. Side stepping. Okay. Yeah. And stop. And you're looking. You good? Okay. So I'm going to show you what. All side look like. All side looks like this. So you looking? Look for Johnny. Johnny's all side. That's all side. Okay? That's all side. I at that time would look at you. This is far side. This is in the middle of the field. This is near side. Far side. Middle of the field, near side. Down, okay. like that? Yeah. So, uh, offside. Offside. You don't right move hand. it till I make eye contact with you. I stop the game. Where's the offside go? I'm about to cover that. Okay. <laughs> I'm to get your signals down first okay. and I'll offside. cover offside. One more time. Offside. Just put it up, hold it. Regardless of what's happening, if you're confident that's offside, do not move. Regardless if the game goes, regardless if the person scores, do not move. Hold your ground. Don't run with the flag. Don't do none of that stuff. Stand where you are. Eventually, that referee is going to look at you. And if you signal this, he's going to he or she's going to blow the game and come over and look at you and go, what's going on? You do like this. Five. He's going to know far, middle, close. He's going to know it's off that. You're not doing one of these. You're straight up. You're going to drop that. You good? He just needs to know now where. Yeah. You good? Side, side. You tell where it is. Far side, far side means all the way on the other side of the field. Gotcha, gotcha. Think of that right in front of right you. Right half, right half, middle of the field somewhere, down here, close to over here. But not until the umpire, the referee head referee. Don't do that until the referee acknowledges the offside. Don't move, hold the ground. Or the referee might move over and see the flag, see something different again. look at you uh -huh. and realize that he sees something or she sees something that you didn't see and do like that that means take your flag down okay. they got it okay okay so okay. remember that brief i gave uh, you as a call yeah. i'll be the bad guy okay. you acknowledge it okay. i'll give you a scenario you make the call. Gotcha. 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 So gotcha. how, how you would not just, just look at me like that you, you were looking uh -huh. you see my hand do like that okay gotcha. yeah. okay you're gonna see my hand do like that put the flag down put the gun again Can I 
the game. Something's not in the back of them. Handball, Johnny and Susie pushing one another or something like that. And you see it. There's the flag. Join the referee's attention. Okay? The referee sees it. When you do that, a foul happens. Point with the Like that. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Do not cross your body with the flag. Gotcha. Do not run with the flag and do one of these. Stop. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. Stop. Uh, and point which okay. way it's going to okay, go. Gotcha. Okay? okay. Don't do not do one of those. Okay. 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 You good? Bam. You good? Yep. Okay. Team kicks the ball out. This is what the goal kick is going to look like. You get to the furthest <laughs> point you can. You stop. And you signal the goal kick. Okay, it's going to be straight across with the right hand. I, you can signal with the left hand or right hand. All right. But when I bring it back down, I'm putting my, I keep my flag in my left hand. Okay. And that's a goal kick. Goal kick. Mm -hmm. That means that the ball went out oh, of play okay. on the goal line by an attacker. Okay, like they were kicking it to somebody that missed it, yeah. and then it's coming back in. But so it's going to be this right here. Line. Okay. Now does the other AR? Nope. He doesn't do anything. No, it's just you. Just you. Okay. Closest the ball closest to you. Because the AR is going to be from that half line to this goal line. The other AR is going to run from that half line to the other end. You both should never be running the same line. So the purpose of that is, so you will be over here. The referee normally be circling on that side as he can't see. So we always keep the play in between the AR and the referee. Box them in. Box them in. Okay? If it's a corner, if it's a corner, you realize that it hit off the defender and went out? That's what the corner is. That's the corner. You notice it's pointed down? Yes. And it's a corner. Okay? That's what that one. So we're going to go over some of it. Make sure you get it. Then we're going to go inside and we're going to cover some of the stuff that you. All right. Offside. Oh, get on the line, sir. You gotta get on the gig line, sir. <laughs> you gotta get on the gig line. Yeah, offside. Okay, it's far side. Far side. There we go. It's in the air. Bring it down a little bit more. Point down with it. Yep, there we go. Alright. Referee sees you, flags are down. Substitution. So, where you as the AR need to be positioned, you need to position here. Give them room to kick, and you're lined up with the goal line. Why are you lined up with the goal line? You can see it across the goal line. That's it. If the ball goes in or out of play before going into play, or if a goal is scored. So, that's why it's important you line up with the goal line. Can you imagine line. actually putting that thing inside there? It happens. That is really yeah. weird. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was 
steps up, kicks the ball and scores. Kicker kicks the ball and scores. I moved from there, started back this way, letting the referee know that it's a good goal. Uh, I'll show it to you again. Okay. We don't have to. We don't have to talk You're about it. Right. You're not signaling either. Nope. So I'm looking. To move the, goal, the goal is scored. I realize that it's a good goal. I confirm. I look at the referee. If you show, game goes on. Then what if we didn't make it? Then I'm there. Don't move. You with the last defender. Right. Okay. The minute the goal is scored. My body language tells, because I'm going to look as a referee, I'm looking at you. If you're still there, I'm doing like this, no goal. If you move, head it back this that direction, you or you're waiting for a foul, the next or the ball went out, then I, I deal with it. If it's not a goal, what do you do with the ball? The ball is still being played. Okay, but what if it went out? Then okay. who went out? Who it went out on? Well, it went out on this person over here. change your size. Which person? Didn't change your size. Then what would it be? It would be one of these, right? Okay. Okay. Because okay. okay. the yeah. ball went out. Okay. See, I'm testing your knowledge right yeah. there. Yeah. You're asking good questions. I'm testing what? your knowledge. Go, go, kick. Go, yeah. kick. go kick. Go kick. Go kick. Did you show us that already? Yeah. That's that's we stood on the blue line. <laughs> oh yeah, right here. So it comes up here. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, gotcha. If you're standing here. Just because you run up. No, don't don't worry about the blue line. What box is this? A yard box. No. What box is this? Penalty box? Somebody have their paper. Come on now. I got it, now. man. Come on now. Come on, what was your question? I've been box. talking for about almost four hours. Come on. <laughs> no, we got, no, we got this. I got this. It is. Penalty area. Penalty area. No. no. It's inside of the penalty area. Okay. Yeah. What's it? So that one box. is... Goalie box. That's it. Goalie box. Oh, oh what's another name for it? I gave you the other name. I throw a bunch of numbers out up here. Okay, I have to find it. Yeah, that's why I told you to write this stuff down. Goal line. <laughs> I got it. My favorite right now. I got it written down. Six yard box. Come on, six, oh, six yard box. Six yard, yeah. Anywhere on this line, the goalie can kick the box. The I ball did write six yard box. Oh, the goalie, the goalie, so you come on in. <laughs> on a restart, listen to me very carefully. On a restart, from a goal, the ball going out and it's a goal kick. This is your six yard box. The goalie can place the ball anywhere along this line, and anybody can kick the ball out. The ball is only in play. When it clears the, what is this box for? The 18. Thank you, sir. 18 yard box or another name for it? Close, penalty area. Okay. Okay, penalty area. The ball is only in play when the ball from a goal kick clears the penalty area or the 18 yard box. Old ball. We good? Put your flag up. Who say no to the down? Yeah, that's a goal. It's an own goal. Yeah, but it's only a play if it goes that way, right? Yes. You see, the person's kicking them by on your mission and bringing your foot back. It's only, it's only one touch. It's only one touch. But the ball was in there. So it wouldn't be a touch. That's good. <laughs> why would it not be a goal? You're almost onto something, but why would it not be a goal? Team, yeah, you can't make a goal right here for the other team. Because it so didn't go out of, the, out of the area. Why? Out of the area. Because that's not, that's not their ball. It hasn't crossed that line yet. So no, it's not it's not now, if you all just merge it together, you have the answer. <laughs> As for the rules of the game, you can't score on yourself from a dead ball. Okay, I thought it was like a bat. You can't score on yourself from a dead ball, especially a goal kick. A dead ball. At that time, it would be a what? If if it ball went out there on the goal line, which happened to go inside the goal, what would it be? Corner kick. Thank you, sir. At that time, it would be a corner kick because you cannot score yourself. 
Bar the corner, corner kick from who? The corner kick to the attacking team. Okay. Yeah, they turn the ball over. Oh. Okay? It'll be a corner yeah, kick to the attacking team. Cam's corner attack. Yeah. 